Welcome to the Unaffiliated Creatives Podcast, a show where independent artists can learn from other independent artists. My name is K.A. Everyday, and each week, I will be speaking with some of the most creative minds in the indie music space, trying to figure out what they have learned while navigating through the music industry without the support of major record labels. This podcast is brought to you by the good people over at King Neppy Studios and powered by Red Weasel Media. Thanks for tuning in to the Unaffiliated Creators Podcast. I'm your host, K.A. Everyday. This is the end of y'all to safe place, so take off your shoes, get comfortable, and stay a while. Do us a favor and please rate the show. And if you have any feedback for us, please email us at unaffiliatedcreatives at gmail.com. The snippet you heard playing was a song titled Route 9 by indie artist Tony Newberry. Now that everybody has taken off their shoes and got comfortable, Tony, what you been up to? What's up, dude? <laughs> um, I have been doing what I can to stay focused and committed to my craft while learning and like keeping an open eye and ears on my on my path. That's what I've been doing. <laughs> all right, all right, I like that. So, talk to us about how it was like growing up in Howell, New Jersey. Yeah, so I'm uh in Howell. I'm from Howell, New Jersey, right? Uh, it was it was. I don't know. It's not really a a terrible area where I'm from. Um, I know that most of my story has a lot to do with my family life and, you know, the household that I come from, I can say definitely has dealt with uh, their scenes of trauma and like their life happenings. But I come from a pretty good background and I'm grateful and blessed for it. All right. So I had to ask this question, man. And I know I'm going to screw this name up plenty of times, so you're going to keep correcting me the whole podcast, but it's okay. So there's a street in Howell, New Jersey named Newberry Road. So yeah. did the town name the street after you, or did no. you create your <laughs> stage name based on the street name? So my artist name, Tony Newberry, uh, I grew up in a household on Newberry Road, right? And I grew up with my aunts and uncles living with me when I was real young, too. You know, so my uncle Tony was a big inspiration for me. And uh, sadly, you know, he passed away when I was younger. But uh, he um, he still is a big figure in my life. And with everything I create and put forward, you know, like the name means a lot to me. So I try to represent it. All right. So I've seen that you've had several notable performances in your music career so far. With that being said, which one of your performances would you say was your favorite and explain why? My favorite performance so far. Um, I think my favorite performance is about to be the headline show I'm throwing on the 4th, on March 4th in New York. I got a show coming up. I know that's going to be my favorite, but my favorite as of right now, I think... God bless you. My favorite as of right now, I believe, is the first ever headline show I did at the House of Independence in Asbury Park. Uh, that show, it showed me a lot about uh, what I've created so far and what's possible. I like that answer. I like how you plug the show that you got coming up, but then you also answer the question. <laughs> yeah, by- yeah, I see what you did. I like that. Yeah. Uh, so I know you're going to think this this uh, question is kind of crazy, but I just had to ask you. So I've seen uh, pictures of you performing on stage where you had on a white tank top. But then yeah. I've also seen a cartoon image of you where you had on a blank, a black tank top. Excuse me. So yeah. with that being said, if you could only choose one color tank top to wear for the rest of your life, what color would you pick and why? <laughs> what the? Uh, I think I would wear, uh, I don't know. I'm not going to lie. I think I have an equal amount and I kind of just pick whatever's there. So maybe I should change it up to a different color sometime soon, but, um, uh, they both work pretty well. So I, I am indifferent. <laughs> All right. I just figured I had to ask. So I see <laughs> that you have a documentary titled Newberry Road and it yeah. viewed on January the 20th at the Smod Castle Cinema. Yep. Tell the audience something about the documentary that will persuade someone who hasn't heard any of your music to go check it out. Yeah, so the little like biopic documentary, uh, the short film that we created, I believe that 
it would encourage people to listen to my music because the whole thing is based on <clears throat> me finding my own inspiration to do what I love most. So to the people that watch that film, uh, the goal that I and the team, shout out Crash Content Productions, that which helped me put everything together, um, the goal I really wanted was to show people how I've been inspired to make my music. So if they're looking for motivation to do what they love, to also listen to it. And I feel like that would push them towards that direction based on um, the outcome of the event that night at the movie theater and based on what people have, have told me. All right. Um, so this is a follow on question. So will the documentary be available more places at some point? So more people would get an opportunity to see it. Yeah. So I'm talking that over with the group of people at crash content that I, I created the, the picture with. Um, we plan on putting it online to sell it like a limited amount of copies. So not, you know, like it's not like for everyone everywhere. Cause it was a special one night thing, you know? Um, but they're also in the process of submitting it to some like film festivals. So we have a meeting actually coming up this week where we're going to discuss like furthering those details to see what we do. All right. Well, you definitely gonna have to hit me up uh, when y'all yeah. get all the plans together because I, I want to see it. That's why I asked the question because I actually went out. I was searching for it. I was like, man, I want to check this thing. I'll, I'll see what it's I'll all email about. It to you. Let me email. I'll just email you the Google Drive link. I would love to show you. I'd love to get your honest feedback, too, because I plan on doing stuff like that in the future. Like it really opened up another lens of creativity for me. Um, So I, I would love to share it with you. That would be really cool. All right. Um. So who do people say you sound like? Uh, I've gotten like a million different <laughs> answers. Um, recently, I heard Mac Miller. And then I also heard Post Malone a little bit. Uh, I've heard stuff like, oh, some flows remind me of like, you must listen to J. Cole. So I don't know. I have a very broad like taste for music. It's, it's really like vast and out there. So when people tell me these random artists that I sound like, that I listen to, I'm like, yeah, I can see it. Like, they definitely inspired my sound. All right. So I've listened to several of your songs. Uh, some of them you were rapping on and other ones you were singing. Mm -hmm. So would you consider yourself a rapper or a singer or both? I, uh, I kind of just go by that, like, I'm an artist. Like, I like to infuse both. I, I really... I want the people that listen to my music to understand I want to help others freely create by me doing the same. So I, when I go into a song, uh, no matter what the beat or whatnot, I kind of just piece together what feels natural to me. So I would say both. Okay. All right. So now I got to ask you this question. So give me your top five singer slash rappers of all time, and you can put them in any order. All time, dude. <laughs> like, how, how am I supposed to do that? Like, oh, I'm going to put you on the spot. All right, so all I'm going to give time. you a couple of minutes to get your list together. So I'll go ahead and give you my five. So, of course, you okay. can't. You got to say Drake. So I got Drake, Bryson Tiller, Tory Lanez, Ty Dolla Sign, and Travis Scott. That's my top five. So these are personal favorites. Yeah, like kind of like okay. your style of, you okay. know, how you do like the rapping and the singing type stuff. I don't even know how you would really classify it. That's why I said singer slash rapper. So right. I'm just asking you, since you do that kind of music, who do who is your top five? I don't have an order, but I'll give you five people. Okay. Uh, Lauren Hill. Um, I really love Mac Miller. Uh, I really like a lot of J. Cole's music has been there for me in my life. Um like there's a difference between music that I've listened to a lot and music that I respect, you know? So right now I'm probably just going to name the people that I've uh, like obtained the most from. And I use like when I was in high school too, I really listened to logic. I really loved him. Uh, I still do. But if there were a fifth, um, Oh my gosh. I don't know. I really love a lot of Kanye's work, but then again, like a lot of his sound was inspired by Dilla. So like, it's just, it's tough for me. Like I know 
I'll throw a singer in there, someone who's sound that I really love that doesn't make like rap music and like is a straight singer. It's like Frank Sinatra. Uh, I actually do listen to him a lot. He was like my fourth or fifth top streamed artist this year. And like I come from a background where like when I go to my uncle's house for like, I don't know, dinner or whatnot, uh, my uncle Sal, he would be playing like all that type of classy music. And I just like how smooth it is. So I'll put those together for now. I'm comfortable with that, but it constantly changes. Yeah, I definitely didn't see Frank Sinatra coming, but that's good though. I like I like <laughs> your list, man. You and it sounds like you do your homework too. I like how you you knew that uh, Kanye was influenced by Jay Dillon and all that. So I like yeah. what's going on, man. Ah, uh, cool. Thanks. I appreciate that. Jay Dillon, the right. goat. Yeah, go RP the goat. <laughs> all right. So I had to ask you this question. So when did you know it was time for you to get a music manager and walk us through that process? Sick. <laughs> so Nino over here is my manager. And the way that went about is kind of like, I don't know, like a storybook thing to me. So I think I was 19 or 20. Um, we actually grew up together. Like we went to high school together, but we weren't It's like we just didn't hang out a lot. Like we just weren't close. You know, we were familiar with each other. But um, once I started putting out my own music after high school, Nino reached out. He was like, yo, this is fire. Like, I think I want to make music. Uh, like when I come back home or whatnot, we're like, let's link up. And I was like, okay, cool. And like, we hit it off. Um, eventually, you know, the music didn't motivate him to make the music as much as it would me. So I was like, let me just show you stuff. So I was like showing him how to produce here and there. And there was a point where he was like, yeah, I want to contribute. Like, what can I do? And a funny story about Nino that I tell people is that we used to go to like Quick Check or Wawa at like 11 at night to get something to eat while I was making music. And he'd be like, yo, bro, watch this. And he'd go tap on a random person buying something. He'd be like, have you ever heard of Tony Newberry? And he would just be like telling them to stream Tony Newberry. And at the time, they were like, who the heck is that? Like, who is this guy? And who is this person telling me about this guy at 11 at night? <laughs> like, he's ridiculous. But at the same time, there was just something about that that motivated me. So at a point where I definitely needed someone to come into my life to really help say that, I should believe in myself. Like I really do have something that I should keep doing. It was him. And you know, he's, he's someone that really has been down to stick out his neck for me. So, uh, that was how we went through that process. Turns out he also has a love for like, I think it froze. Are you back? Oh, so, so, no, where, so, where, so where you were, you was, you was explaining, uh, you was about to really explain, his uh, whole deal with being your manager. Oh, uh, um, well, do you want to, should we ask him? Like, I don't really know. Like, like man, this, this your podcast, man. It's up to you. The reason why I don't read the reason why I ask this question is because, you know, a lot of independent artists, you know, they tune into the podcast and this will be a question that a lot of people would have. I mean, I even was kind of, okay. You know, wondering okay. myself because I mean, I'm an artist myself. I don't have a manager, so I was just yeah. wondering at what point of your career do you kind of like, man, this might be the time where I need to get a manager because I'm at a certain point and having a manager can probably push me to the next level. That's why I asked the question. Okay, yeah, I definitely understand you. So I won a couple showcases, uh, and I was looking to reach out to more people about like other events to do and stuff. And the majority of people who were down to support me were my boys at the time. So one of my boys was very interested in what was going on. And I was like, okay, cool. Like, would you be able to help me get noticed more? And they're like, yeah, without a doubt. Like, I would like to try something like that. So I kind of, to anyone at home that wants to know um, how to take that next step, I think it's having the mindset of constantly looking to build rather than thinking about blowing up. If you're thinking about blowing up, it can get really confusing because then you start to question, well, if I'm just trying to blow up, what happens after I blow up? Oh, I'm going to do it again and again and again. I rather look at it in a sense of, okay, if I'm building a business, what would I want? Now I need to start delegating some things to other people. And one of them is, hey, I need to stay and be a creative. I'll talk to people when I can, like podcasts like this is great. But to set it up, I don't want to put time into that because I rather focus on just creating, you know. So, for yourself, man, or for whoever is uh, really thinking, how do I take myself to the next step? Pay attention to who really believes in you and ask why they believe in you. 
I like that answer, man. I, I like that you took the time to really break that down. And this is kind of a follow-on question to the manager piece. Um, so what would an artist have to do if they wanted to collab with you? And the reason why I'm asking you this, because I know I see a lot of artists kind of get caught in the middle of this, because when you have a manager, sometimes, you know, it's like if another artist want to collab with you, the, the correct answer or the way that they should do it is you got to go through the manager to get to you. But then I see some artists, depending on the kind of relationship that they have with the person that's trying to collab with them, they'll bypass the manager and they'll just talk directly to each other. So I guess my question is, if an artist yeah. wanted to collab with you, what does that process look like? Yeah, preferably, uh, like it would be to reach out to my manager whose link is in my bio. Um, out of respect, you know, like that, that's how we would like to operate things just to have that system go together. Um, if people do just kind of shoot me a DM and I see it, I'm, I'm more, I'm more than down. If the song is something that I'm like, Hey, I believe in what's going on here. Like, I, like when it comes to like, am I a picky person? Sure. But I also don't want to hop on something that, uh, something that isn't me. You know, like I want to create stuff that I also connect with, like talk about this life journey with other creatives along our paths, you know, drop my piece in their life. They can drop their piece of mine. But when it comes to making that happen, um, I guess. And then like the way to reach out, like what to say, in a sense, I just like people that are being honest. Like if someone went to me in person and they said, yo, like Tony Newberry, I love your music. I make music too. I'm super passionate about it. I have this song. I think I could really hear you on. Do you mind if I send it to you? I'd give them my email right then and there. Like that's the type of relationship that I want to develop with the community of music. And I hope a lot of other people do too. So I hope that answers. Cause I know yeah, I'm going yeah. off a little bit, you know, like I'm going off. <laughs> No, I mean, like, you, you answered the question. I, you know, like I said, this is okay. this is a little bit for me because I'm I was curious, but also it's for yeah. a lot of other artists that's listening to the podcast too, because I'm pretty sure they get faced with those kind of scenarios all the time. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to ask you, so from all the music that you've created, which song is your favorite and why? I love all my songs equally. <laughs> but if I have one. That means the most to me. Uh, it's the song I have called Tony. And I just remember writing that and it being a really like wow thing. Like that song is about losing somebody who really matters to this day to like my family and I. And uh, it was just being able to find words for that. I find that that subject of like losing someone in life, it's a very hard thing to put words to that make us as human beings feel comfortable with like how we feel. And I feel like with that song, I really put some words together that uh, I'll forever be proud of, you know? And I plan on like re-recording it one day and like reposting it. I really want like the whole world to hear that track. Yeah. So so, uh, so that's the song um, that's based on, or you talking about your uncle that passed away? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty I, I can see how that could be tough because, you know, it's very personal to you and you're talking about a family member that passed away. So I can see that one being a hard one to to really uh, to pull yeah. off. But. Yeah, without a doubt. I think uh, I think it's like an oxymoron in a way. Like, it's so beautiful, yet it can also be so dark. Um, but that experience took me on this whole life path that like has me where I'm at right now. And I'm forever grateful for it. And, you know, um, I'm just proud of it. Yeah. I'm just proud of it. And I want to keep making myself proud of what I'm creating. So I want others to feel proud about what they're creating. Like if that, that's really me just being honest. Yeah. All right. Um, talk to us about what inspired you to write the song Route 9. And can you explain to us exactly what the song is talking about? Yeah, so uh, I spend a lot of time driving to these events. Like, my back is killing me. <laughs> like, I just came back from Pittsburgh and I was in Long Island yesterday and I did all the drives. Like, but I, but like, that's, that's a different story. <laughs> but I'm, uh, I don't know, like, the, the main road that we use to get to like exits is route nine. And like the first line's like, what well, feels like I'm drunk on the highway getting high on right route nine. 
it's like uh smoking driving and like feeling so tired while that's going on as if like you were almost intoxicated that you're looping you know um and then the verses are pretty much like me just saying where i'm at in my life and the whole thing i want to get across the point i really want to get across with both the verses is that i'm just trying to I'm just trying to show like how much effort it really takes to put into building your dream. Like it, it, it does not get easier. It gets more fun, but like it does not get easier at all, dude. And it's something that I've learned to just talk about more and more. So the song Route Nine, it has like a, a it's like smooth chill hook, which is kind of like yo, enjoy this. And the verse is like let it out. So that that's what I really aim to do with that song. Well, the reason why I wanted to ask you, because I'm gonna be honest with you, I had I listened to the song several times. Now that now the joint's hot, so don't, like, don't I have take no the wrong idea way. what it means. I was gonna say something like that. Yeah, so it got to the point. I really didn't care what you was talking about because the, <laughs> the just the vibe and the flow and the melody. I was like, I was like, hey, hey, but then I was like. Is he really talking about driving or is this like a metaphor for some deeper meaning or something that I'm not catching? Yeah. So I kept listening to it because I was like, well, maybe he's talking about something else and I'm just too stupid to understand exactly what he's talking about. So I said, <laughs> you know what? I'm going to ask him exactly what was this song talking about because maybe I just didn't catch it. Yeah, I think a big thing with my music that I want to do, um, I want to allow people to interpret interpret what they want to hear based off of what they're going through um, by creating a platform that helps people feel, you know? So, uh, hey, man, if you just got like 15 minutes of enjoyment of just bumping it or whatnot, uh, I'm completely happy with that. And if you also feel like you heard words that can change your life, I'm more than proud to share that experience with you. So. All right, so I'm glad that you're wearing the hoodie that you're wearing today. So my next question was, so I saw a video of you on YouTube where you was performing a song titled 1955. And in the video, you was wearing a white hoodie that looked like it said Tony Newberry, it looked like a logo. So yeah. I have to ask you, do you have your own clothing brand? Yes, like I have my own merch. Um, like an example would be for the show that I have coming up at the Salton Room on Mar March 4th from 7 to 10 p.m. in Brooklyn, New York, <laughs> uh, that we created like one time merch, like one time only merch for that show with the flyer on the back. And it says Brooklyn, New York, 718. That's like the area code. So like I plan on creating merch and that hoodie. Yeah, it's mine. And uh, this is a logo that I draw. It's a street sign like Tony, like Newberry to street. And it says Tony Newberry. And uh it's a good idea. I really like it. And I plan on really figuring out and finding that direction of where I want to take the merch because I would love to make a really dope clothing line. I really would. All right. So I like I like that idea that uh, so when you do certain shows, certain pieces are going to be exclusive. Like if, if you only can get that particular item if you go to that show. Yeah. Yeah. I want to start doing that. I like that. Yeah. All right. So with the hoodie like you're wearing right now, that's just more of a standard logo. Do you have a place right now where people can get stuff like that? Or are you still in the works or working all that stuff out? Yeah. Uh, TonyNewberry.com. <laughs> I'm okay. serious. Yeah, I have my own website. And then, you know, if some people like they see me wearing it, they're like, yo, where can I get that? They like DM me or my manager. We kind of we just tell them like, yo, like send us like, I don't know, I think the hoodie's 35. 35 or 40, uh, whatever it is, uh, over like Venmo or Cash App and uh, give us your address and we'll ship it to you. So I've gone through those ways so far. Okay. Um, I've never asked an artist this question. So uh, if it comes off a little crazy, just let me know. So um, what social media app do you use the most to promote your music and why? I use, I use Instagram the most. I like Instagram more than TikTok and I like Instagram more than Facebook and Twitter because it feels like I'm building a resume. I feel like when I look somebody up personally, I always go to Instagram first. Like when it's links, I go to like fact check and stuff. Um, I just like the layout of it. It's something that I've been growing and I've had like the most success on. Um, I don't know. 
uh, that that's that's an app that I highly recommend if people who are passionate about what they're creating want to you know find other creatives and when they do say yo check my stuff out I think posting it to to Instagram is pretty fair. Um, I would say that my answer is, is pretty similar to yours. I was just curious. Uh, that's why yeah. I, I wanted to ask you. Uh, so I use Instagram more than the other ones. Um, I think it's just Instagram to me personally is just set up better for like music artists and stuff because you can post videos so people can see, you know, your music videos and different videos that you're doing and you can post, you know, pictures and stuff like that. Um, you got the stories part of it. Um, I've heard that people are starting to use Twitter more to try to promote what they're doing. I'm not a really big Twitter person. And to be honest, I haven't really figured it out. Um, but yeah. So yeah, I would say Instagram. I, I use that one more than all the other ones too. Mm-hmm. All right. So let me ask you this. Uh, so would you rather stay independent or would you want to get signed by a major record label at some point and why? So I love this question because I feel like I'm really trying to figure that out. On one hand, I would love to be a, the biggest major label artist like to ever do it. You know, like I would love to have that be something that I am. And then on another hand, I would love to be like the most influential independent. Um, I think I'm pretty open minded. I want to do what helps get my music and my message out, you know, like trying to connect with other people. Uh, the most, but at the end of the day, everything I've done so far has been independent. And as I start to meet more like labels and people that are affiliated, uh, I'm always open minded to talk and I'm constantly looking to learn and take my career to the next level. All right. Uh, so the premise of this podcast is independent artists learning from other independent artists. So I can't let you get out of here without asking you this question. So what mistakes, if any, have you made so far in your music career that other people can learn from? I think the biggest key to my success and staying motivated as an artist and independent creative. And what's made me learn is that keep looking to learn. Like I'm always looking to learn something. It's just some, it's just the way I guess I program myself, uh, and like infused with how I was raised or whatnot. I don't know exactly what it is, but the more I've looked to learn, the more I found out why I love what I do. And if there's something I could say that was like a big loss and like lesson that I learned, not necessarily a loss, but a big lesson that I learned, it's a don't like when I do what I do, I always expect the best. Right. But don't have expectations like and that's not a negative thing. I say that in a sense of always be open minded to anything that could happen in life. Um in the music game, in your like personal life game, stuff like that. I've learned for me being open-minded with what the universe throws my way. um, That's allowed me to see that there's no such thing as a loss. You know, it's, it's just, there's so much room to grow and gain from what I'm really like seeing right now that uh, keeping that type of mindset I think that's essential for anyone that wants to build what they love. Yeah. All right. Um, Is there anything that I should have asked you, but I didn't ask you for whatever reason? Um, I don't know. I came in here open-minded. I didn't expect anything. So see, you know what I mean? (laughs) But I'm, uh, I don't know if there's one thing that I would say to anyone watching this, if it's a couple years from now and like, I'm a, I'm a huge artist or if it's right now and I am where I am, you know, uh, I just, one thing I learned in the conversation last night is, uh, don't ever change, like always be yourself. And I find that for me, one thing I always want to remind myself is to be who I know I truly am at that moment. So for anyone watching this, if there's one thing that I, I wish I would have been asked, it's what's that one more thing you want to say? And like, for me, it would just be, be you and do what you believe in, you know, just keep going. All right. Um, is there anything that you want to ask me? Yeah. What keeps you like, 
What keeps you motivated? Because for me, I know that I'm constantly looking for a reason to like stay alive in this world, constantly looking for a reason to want to be better. What's made you want to put yourself out there as a creative as well? Um, I think it's my personality and, uh, I mean, I mean, I'm not gonna say I personally know you, but it seems like me and you are a lot of like we're creative people and we enjoy what we're doing. So I think when you're passionate about something, I think just that passion drives you to want to keep doing it. It's not really about the fame or the success or the money. It's just about enjoying what you're doing. And um, even when it comes to the music or even with the podcast. Um, it's all about growth. And like you said earlier, it's all about learning and, and just growing and just, you know, doing better than what you're doing. So I think that's kind of what drives me um, with the music. I keep wanting to push the envelope because I'm pretty sure you deal with the same thing. At some point, you kind of get bored of doing the same thing. So you always want to keep finding new ways of doing things. If that's just, you know, trying different beats, trying different cadences, you know, writing styles or even totally different genres of music. Um, with the podcast, I felt because I could I could relate to other independent artists because I'm an independent artist myself, and I know how it feels when it feels like there aren't really a lot of outlets to really promote what you're doing, and it seems like you know only the big uh, brands they only bring on the big artists. So if you're a smaller artist, you don't always get those same opportunities. So you know. I'm not talking about stuff that I don't know anything about because I'm going through the same thing that everybody else, you know, independent artists are going through. So that's why I kind of take, you know, I get enjoyment out of being able to help others that I'm also in their same similar situation. So I hope that answers your question. I know it probably sounds yeah. like I'm rambling, but, you know. I do the same thing after I say something. No, uh, I definitely appreciate uh, you being open throughout this whole interview. And willing to tell me that too, because I do feel like we connect based off of this conversation. Um, I'm just always looking to like figure out what it is, like why I should keep going, man. And I always find something because I'm too obsessed to like give up. And it's kind of a crazy thing to like recognize. But after like spectating myself so much, um, I just feel like it'd be impossible for me to stop because I feel like I wouldn't even be existing, you know? Yeah. Crazy. All right. Well, before you get out of here, tell the audience where they can find you online. My name is Tony Newberry. I had a great time here. And you can find me on Instagram, TikTok, uh, Facebook, at Real Tony New, R E A L T O N Y. Uh, God bless you. R E A L T O N Y N E W. And you can find my music on all platforms. Uh, Tony Newberry, just T-O-N-Y-N-E-W-B-U-R-Y. So I hope you check it out and enjoy it. All right. Well, I appreciate you taking time to come on the podcast, man. And I'm definitely going to be looking for this documentary and, and more music that you got coming in the near future. Yeah, man. Shoot us your email. We can send it to you right now. All right, man. We'll take it easy. <laughs>